Hey guys, this is Corrosive with uh, Tech Top 10s, and today you're watching the top 10 GPS facts you might not know about. Number 10, GPS shows its utility. While GPS, or the Global Positioning System, originally began development in the 1960s, it became an asset to the United States government in 1972 during the operation of Desert Storm. Soldiers were equipped with handheld GPS receivers that allowed them to more accurately understand their position in the field. After the Gulf War, the U.S. Army began to install GPS receivers in all of their land terrain vehicles as a means to prevent friendly fire, which unfortunately had become a major contributor to U.S. casualties at the time as many commanders had become lost in vast Iraqi deserts. This eventually led to GPS being used not only for navigation on the ground, but being implemented in missiles as well to better track their trajectory. Number 9. A GPS for Everyone GPS was originally developed as a military aid for the United States government. However, in the 1990s, consumer-grade receivers began production, and the government allowed GPS access to civilians. However, it was less accurate. This feature became known as selective availability, and was used to ensure that only the United States government could receive an accurate location, in hopes to prevent enemy nations from using our own navigation satellites against us. However, in the year 2000, Bill Clinton announced that selective availability had been disabled to ensure it could be used to prevent disasters that could otherwise easily be avoided with accurate GPS technology. This, of course, caused an explosion in the marketplace that created thousands of jobs and of those in the GPS sector, developing receivers and devices for both the military and consumers alike. Number 8. The GPS Market while GPS was originally developed purely for the military, the fact that selective availability had been disabled by the year 2000 and consumer-grade GPS hardware was becoming less expensive to produce, what we've ended up seeing is an explosion in the marketplace that has ended with great profit margins higher than we could have ever expected in the consumer GPS market. We now have GPS units in our phones, our laptops, even our cars all contain a GPS unit. And those do don't that don't may soon obtain them. And here's a quick uh, GPS tip. Contrary to common belief, GPS satellites don't actually know your position. Rather, your receiver listens to each satellite, calculates the distance and altitude from each individual satellite, among other factors, to de determine your current location on the face of the Earth. While the GPS satellite may not know where you are, there's unfortunately nothing stopping equipped GPS modules from sharing information with third parties. The common cell phone is a perfect example of this. Number seven, the largest military constellation. While the United States has launched a number of communication satellites, among other things, into orbit, as of this video, there are 31 total satellites in the GPS constellation. This makes it the largest United States military satellite network. In fact, as far as I'm aware, it's the largest government satellite network of any kind. And this network's actually going to grow as it's being replaced slowly with the third generation GPS satellites that we'll get to in a minute. Number six, trilateration. You may be familiar with triangulation, in which the signals from three points intersect in order to find your location. Uh, this is often associated with cell phone towers. With GPS, however, we need to work a little bit differently as these satellites are within Earth's orbit rather than on a tower on the terrestrial Earth. The easiest way to explain trilateration is to take four satellites within view and draw a sphere around each one. Two points will be created, one in space and one on the Earth. The point where the spheres intersect on Earth is your current location. Number five, special relativity and time drift. Each GPS satellite must keep track of time in order to function correctly. However, did you know that Einstein's theory of special relativity states that a moving clock runs slower? If this wasn't bad enough, general relativity tells us that clocks will run faster at a higher altitude. This truly shows us the dedication that went into developing the GPS constellation, as even a drift of 38 microseconds, which must be corrected daily within each GPS satellite can actually cause a drift of hundreds of feet or even miles being miscalculated on your GPS receiver. Number four, atomic detection. When the United States launched the GPS satellite constellation, not only did they launch the perfect war aid and one of the most powerful tools known to man, 
They also launched the largest atomic detonation detection system currently in operation. When an atomic weapon is detonated, it causes disturbances in the atmosphere, which GPS satellites are capable of detecting, at a frequency of 1,381.05 MHz. Using the same trilateration method, it is possible to pinpoint exactly where the detonations took place. I wonder, however, if someone was to build a sufficiently powerful transmitter at the detection frequency, would it be possible to fake a detonation and cause a GPS satellite to think a nuclear blast had occurred? Perhaps we're better off not knowing the answer to that one. Number 3. Atomic Timekeeping Due to the fact that GPS satellites rely so heavily on time, they all carry a very precise atomic clock that is accurate to 40 nanoseconds. Because of this, GPS is often used for timekeeping in sensitive projects and applications where data needs to be synchronized very accurately. Using a bit of code, it's actually quite easy to extract the time from a GPS satellite within your area by simply pulling the serial data off of a GPS receiver module. Using the data from a GPS satellite is actually one of the most accurate ways you can keep track of time short of owning your own atomic clock. Number 2. The SARSAT Payload as our GPS satellite constellation becomes older, we must inevitably replace it with newer satellites to keep it operational. The third generation will be much more accurate, however, what I find most interesting is the inclusion of a 406 MHz emergency beacon relay um, that will be placed on board these satellites as a secondary payload. Currently, our 406 MHz beacons are relayed via payloads on several NOAA weather satellites. However, these current satellites do not provide global coverage like the GPS constellation does. So not only does this mean we'll have a worldwide emergency beacon coverage, but it will also likely allow a new world of satellite hacking to emerge, as the proposed relays are indeed the same bent pipe architecture that has allowed the current system be to become filled with pirate activity. Number 1. A Lost Creator On May 8, 2014, Roger Easton passed away at the age of 93. His contributions have made GPS what it is today, and has quite literally changed how we live our everyday lives. Even if you don't directly use GPS, those around you who may be delivering food, gas, and other necessities of this world have used the services he helped create on a daily basis. I'd like to end this video with a brief moment of silence in his name, and the accomplishments that he made in his lifetime to help better the world.